Good morning guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro and as you might have guessed by the title and the little intro clip today we are talking about the Celestron Zoom. Now at this point I kind of feel like the Zoom review guy because I've done the review of the Batter Zoom, the Cybon Zoom and now the Celestron Zoom. Um, they seem to be pretty popular eyepieces, I certainly enjoy using them, so I wanted to uh, do a review on this one because it happened to come across my table, so I figured, you know, why not? And actually, from doing analytics on my videos, people are actually interested in the Solar Celestron Zoom in general. Um, I see, you know, them getting bought all the time. So, let's take a look. Alright, here she is. Let me get a sip of coffee and put the sucker down. Um, so... What's the story on the Celestron Zoom? Um, not really sure when this guy was released, the 8 to 24 millimeter version. Uh, it's been around for a while though. There's actually several variants of this, like Televi makes a really similar one. Uh, a couple of other brands make really similar um, eyepieces. So basically specs wise on this, it's got a 40 degree to 60 degree field of view. So at uh, the 24 millimeter setting, you've got a 40 degree field of view, pretty narrow. And then when you get to the 8mm setting, you get up to 60 degrees of field of view, which is acceptably wide, um, in my opinion. Um, overall, eye relief on this is rated from 15 to 18 millimeters. Um, as you can see, it's got a pretty tall eye cup, right? And normally, um, you know, while I'm on the eye cup subject, I'm not a really big eye cup, you know, like fan. Like, I usually just have them down on my eye pieces. With this eyepiece, you know, the eye relief is long enough to where it's actually comfortable to have the eye cup up, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, you can fold it down, so, you know, if, if you're not an eye cup person, they do fold down. Although, as you can see, you know, it's not, it, it, like, I wouldn't say that's super easy, right? But you can, you know, you can fold it down, and that's kind of how it looks like folded down. Um, overall, build quality will kind of, you know, start with that. Um, you know, this is about average build quality for an, for an eyepiece, I'd say, these days. Um, you know, it's not super cheap. Like, this uh, is made out of metal. Um, uh, this, I'm not really sure if this is. It's probably metal as well. Um, so, overall, build quality is pretty nice on this thing. Um, kind of moving on to the mechanics of this. This is, you know, kind of one thing that I'll say is, you know, if, uh, nothing wrong with it per se but it does feel a little substandard uh when you turn the zoom mechanism it's just you know it's kind of grabby it's not very smooth it's not a really fluid motion and also um at there is no clicks or anything at the you know different millimeter settings that are marked on the eyepiece it's just the fluid motion and let me actually get this uh so i've got the mic set up right here right let me actually put this up to the mic and see if you could hear this thing churn. Like, I mean, I could, you know, I could hear just the mechanics of this churning, right? So, you know, let's, let's see if you could hear that on the mic. So it's kind of like almost like a metal on metal type of, you know, like sound that it makes. And that's kind of the feeling that you get. So not very smooth. Um, I've got the batter zoom here, which is, you know, kind of the eyepiece that I really, you know, enjoy and recommend on the zoom. Um, just covering kind of, you know, what you get by going up to, you know, to a premium zoom. Uh, just so, you, you know, you kind of know. Um, basically with this guy you're gonna get an inch and a quarter uh, form factor just like that one but it also does come with a skirt to where you can screw it in and make it a two inch essentially eyepiece so that's really nice I do enjoy that um, overall build quality on this you know it's a little bit nicer I think the finishes are nicer on this I mean it's you know the, the Celestron isn't like you know that much worse though this one is actually pretty cool right so it actually does have an eye cup that will go up right and uh, essentially it's a nice smooth motion so if you you know if you want to use the eye cup you know you just twist it to whatever height you want or if you don't like to use the eye cup like I don't you just have it all the way down pretty sweet I like that um, the zoom mechanism on this is just butter smooth. I mean, this is just, you know, I mean, there's no resistance almost, you know, I mean, besides like that, just really smooth feel to it. And there are clicks at the 
24, 20, 16, 12, and 8 millimeter settings. So if you're using this like in the bino viewer or something like that, or if you, you know, if you maybe want to compare this to a different eyepiece, that's let's say like a 12 millimeter, you can, you know, distinctly know that you're at 12 millimeters on this, or, you know, whatever other setting you want to do. So that's pretty cool. I really enjoy that. Um, and actually, let me put this up to the mic again and see if you could, you know, I'm not really sure if this is going to really show up, you know, in the video, but uh, it's worth the world. So check out the zoom mechanism. So there's no metal on metal feeling with this. I mean, this feels like a well-oiled machine, basically, is, you know, is the way that I put it. Um, and then the clicks, you know, they're pretty distinct. They're not like, you know, something that, you know, you really click into and then you have to force it, you know, into the next setting. Pretty smooth. I mean, you know, very, you know, really enjoy them. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, the overall build quality, the overall, you know, kind of, you know, construction of, you know, the Celestron Zoom and, you know, a more premium, uh, essentially, Zoom eyepiece. All right, now shifting gears and kind of talking more about the optical performance, which I'm sure is what you, you know, really came here for if you're considering this eyepiece. Now, you know, to be a uh, good uh, astronomical citizen and stuff like that, I will point out, you might notice that my telescope is pointing to the sun, right? So if you're ever doing that, please, please, please make sure you've got the proper filtration. Either use a white uh, light solar filter on the top of your scope, or in this case, I'm using the Daystar Quark, which actually filters the sun, you know, here. Uh, so you do not ever want to put, you know, point your scope at the sun. I, I was just doing some solar observing with the, you know, Celestron Zoom versus the battery to kind of get more of a feel for it. Um, you know, besides just, you know, what, what I've done at night. Um, so anyhow, getting into the, um, you know, optical performance of this thing. So, what do you get by spending three times more on this thing versus this thing? So the Celestron Zoom at the time of publishing of this video, I, I looked the prices up on both of these guys. This guy's around a hundred bucks, you know, roughly give or take. This one's around three hundred bucks, roughly give or take. You know, again, depending on where you shop around, that type of deal. So, um, like, what's the main difference? I guess uh, the very first thing that you'll notice optically with these things, and this is, you know, this is a pretty obvious difference. This isn't something that you, you know you kind of have to like really sit there and compare these a lot is the field of view um so again this thing has a field of view uh the celestron zoom of 40 to 60 degrees this one has a field of view of 50 to 68 degrees um at the eyepiece you know when you're just observing with these it's a pretty obvious difference i mean you're not gonna mistake this you know like this eyepiece for this eyepiece or vice versa like if you're at the 24 millimeter setting even the battery zoom isn't very wide at 50 degrees, uh, but you know, I'd say it's acceptably wide. Like, I don't like, I feel like, you know, 60 and above is really where I want to be with all my eyepieces. But, you know, it's it, like if this is the only eyepiece that I have, you know, I, I can use it and, you know, get by with it. Um, when you go down to something like 40 millimeter, 40 degrees, I mean, a field of view uh, to me that's just a little too narrow i mean it just really starts to look like that really straw effect you know it doesn't feel like you know i'm really like connected to the sky it just really feels like you know i'm looking through a device it doesn't feel like i'm kind of you know falling into the field of view you know you know um and that type of deal uh the closer that you get to that eight millimeter setting the wider the field of view will get with both of these guys again with this on the top side at 60 degrees, this one top side at 68 degrees. You know, at this at the eight millimeter setting, or you know, like you know, let's say between 12 and eight millimeters, this is acceptably wide because you're in that like 50 to 60 degree range, or roughly or so. Um, I think you know it's pretty usable. It's not bad, um, but this is definitely wider. Um, 68 degrees is kind of like you know like one of my favorite field of views. Even though I've got 82 degree uh, field of view eyepieces and the hundreds, um, I still like the 68. So to me, this is very, very usable. I really enjoy this. This, you know, I feel like, again, in that 12 to 8 millimeter setting, I could live with, but, um, you know, it's getting kind of kind of narrow. 
So pretty big difference in the field of view. So that's one thing you're for sure gaining by going up with this. All right, and now to the review, to the part of the review where the rubber meets the road. How did these, you're like, I don't care about the field of view, you know, stop talking, just tell me which one's better optically, right? <laughs> okay, um, so how do these guys compare optically? Just, you know, as far as contrast goes, as far as sharpness goes, and that type of deal. Um, I spent a good portion of last night comparing these, you know, pretty critically on Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, which, you know, if you're kind of near to astronomy, the planets are a really good, you know, way to, like, really evaluate the performance of eyepieces or, you know, other, like, astronomy gear. Uh, because there's a lot of detail there. A lot of it is low contrast detail um, and that type of deal. Now, the scene last night, for those, you know, more advanced users, the scene last night, it, it wasn't, like, amazing, but it also wasn't bad. So I'd say from my area, it was average to above average so it's definitely good enough to you know like evaluate the performance of, of these eyepieces i was actually using them both with the 2x barlow because that way i could really you know kind of start to push the magnification with the tack here with my beater five incher um so how do these guys compare overall you know sharpness wise i was pretty impressed with this guy honestly I, you know, in the scene that we had, again, you know, like roughly average, above average scene for my area, and I was probably using powers of around 200x, maybe up to 250, you know, magnification wise, just kind of give you an idea. Um, you know, I, I really, you know, I'd be very hard pressed to say that this thing wasn't, you know, let's say like 90% of the sharpness of this thing. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of difference. Um, but, you know, it's something that I really kind of had to sit there and nitpick. I mean, like, you know, it, so the performance was pretty close, which is, you know, that's a very, you know, good bow to this eyepiece because the batter zoom, um, it's about as sharp of an eyepiece as I've ever owned, and I've owned a lot of eyepieces. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this thing is, you know, incredibly sharp. This thing, you know, I was pretty impressed. I think, you know, if the scene was just like one of those, you know, rare, perfect nights that, you know, here in the Northwest, we get like, you know, like three of those a year or something like that. I think that you'd really have to have one of those nights to really see the difference between these sharpness wise. So I think, you know, overall, um, yeah, pretty, pretty close. On the average night, I think the average user would not really be able to see a sharpness difference between these two, you know, honestly. Um, now moving on to contrast the contrast it was a pretty obvious difference Like when I was looking at the belts of Jupiter, you know, they did pop out, you know I would say significantly more with this one. So the contrast with this is better I'm not sure if it's because of a better polish on the lenses or what it is maybe better coatings You know, I really don't know, you know, I'm not you know, I'm a good, you know visual uh, you know <laughs> observer and i know like when i see something i'm not really good at knowing like the theory you know behind it so i don't know what it is the contrast is better on this thing i tested the light throw put so if you're you know if you're using these for like deep sky type of stuff that extra contrast will definitely help uh this thing does kind of you know it's it's noticeable that this thing does uh let through uh, a little bit more light so everything just looks a little brighter in it as well compared to this one which was kind of my you know I, i've tried zoom my pieces before the batter right and i didn't really like them too much and that was like this generation of uh, zooms right i mean the image is just it was just never quite as bright as a regular eyepiece in this the contrast was never quite as good as a regular eyepiece in this um until again i tried the batters and that's why i recommend this one and, you know if, if you haven't watched my uh like review or whatever of the batter zoom on youtube you know you know by all means check that out if you're kind of curious about zoom my pieces i talk a lot more about zooms you know in, in that video uh, but that's why I recommend this one because this thing is about as good as a regular eyepiece, right? And it gives you that huge magnification range, right? This eyepiece, um, you know, it's kind of close in some regards, but it, you know, it definitely falls short. So don't, you know, I'm not, there's no way that I'm going to say that, oh yeah, this thing's, oh, you know, a hundred bucks and it's good as, it's, it's as good as, you know, like the best, you know, zoom out there. Uh, that would be very far from the truth. So, 
Uh, good eyepiece, you know, if, I would say, you know, just kind of conclude and bring the ship home, right, so that we're not here for 14 hours. Um, I would say that if you're just on a limited budget, right, a hundred bucks is all that you could spend, and you really want that utility of a zoom eyepiece, right, you want that wide magnification range. Maybe you've got a spotted scope that, you know, you want to do, or maybe a grab and go scope to where you just want one eyepiece, right. 100 bucks is all you got to spend. Uh, look at this then. Actually, maybe look at the review that I've got of the Saibon Zoom. That's actually another awesome option. And this type of price range is actually a little bit less expensive than this then. Um, so, yeah, not a bad eyepiece. I would say for the planets, for the moon, it's pretty good. If you're doing double star work, I'd say this is another good option for that because you don't really care about the you know wider field of view for double stars pretty sharp eyepiece um overall though um you know if you could save up enough to buy this or um just in general invest the money into this and you, you know like if you if you see yourself sticking around in the hobby for a while trust me this is worth the investment um i mean it's about as sharp as it gets contrast is awesome on it you get that wider field of view so overall, I would still highly, highly recommend, you know, like stepping up to something like this guy. Uh, but again, if, you know, if, if your budget just simply will not allow that, you know, this is actually a pretty good option. So anyhow, um, hopefully you guys enjoy this review. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. Um, if you guys are not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.